assuming that the ordination goes through next Saturday, this is going to be the last Sunday I'll have as a layperson. And this was the last time for me to actually serve as an acolyte at a Sunday liturgy. And surprisingly, this day was kind of unremarkable. And it's as if the only thing I'm feeling is just some satisfaction. And so the satisfaction that my ministry went well and I was actually able to get some rest. And which is suppose a good thing. Not every day has to be some kind of cataclysmic happening. So with that in mind, thankfully, this gives me a chance to do something I've really been wanting to do, and that is to acknowledge the four priests who I really feel indebted to for bringing me to this point. I am a Catholic seminary named Kyle, and I am becoming a deacon in six days. I'm not quite sure when exactly in my seminary formation I came up with this list of four priests, but I'm pretty sure it happened fairly early on. And so these four men, they represent key turning points in my life from the very start of my vocation story. And I just want to, I guess, recognize the good priests. We hear so much about the bad priests, the priests who make mistakes. And it's true, I mean, they're present and it's a very sad reality, but from my experience, the reason I'm here is because of the good priests, and I hope to emulate them someday. And for the, for this video, I'm just going to be referring to them with their last name initial, uh, just out of respect for them. The first priest on my list is Father P. Father P was a parochial vicar for the first time ever at my home parish, back when I was in first and second grade. And it was then that I learned what a vocation was. He was a very present priest to the students at the parochial school. He would come to our classrooms, talk, talk to us about the lives of the saints, give us holy cards, play with us during recess. He was just very present. And I have, I have a, an oddly specific memory of him teaching us what vocation was. We were all seated around crisscross applesauce. He was in a chair, there was a little easel, and he, drew, he wrote the word vocation on the, on the board. And he made the connection between vocation and vocabulary. The vocabulary being the subject of what we call things, because I guess vocabulary was all the rage in first and second grade, and vocation. What God called us to do, to be. And for some reason that stuck. And something about his presence, his example is very inspiring. And I, back in my second grade mind, I was thinking, hey, I could be like Father P. I could be a priest one day. Granted, that was also in line with being a priest, an engineer, a scientist, an en firefighter, all, you know, all these typical second grade careers. But then priesthood was there and somehow it stuck. Something about my parish back home was that it was kind of the training parish, at least one of the training parishes in the diocese where a lot of the new priests came for the first assignment. So eventually Father P moved on and thankfully he's been very much in contact with my family. We've kept in touch uh, and eventually a new priest came into my life, Father B. It's an interesting thing because he came, he started as a uh, parochial vicar there. He left for a couple of years and came back as a pastor um, for the last couple of years and then he since moved on. He was very instrumental for me, a wonderful example, affirming my, you know, my interest. By, by, by the time he came, came around, I was probably in fourth grade, still a little kid, but he was still a figure I looked up to. And as I grew up and was, was going to high school and to college, he was still keeping this in contact with me, you know, checking to see where I was going with this sense of vocation as it blossomed from this kind of you know, immature, idealistic, second grade idea to something more mature where I could enter, when I could actually enter into seminary. Eventually, Father B moved on and I was in high school. High school was a time of exploration for me. The identity of being the, the future priest something that began to wear on me, even though I was in Catholic school. You know, there's, it came with certain social disadvantages, I suppose. I wasn't able to really interact with my peers, uh, the other boys in my class, because oftentimes their conversation was no good for a person as holy as me, apparently. So oftentimes I felt a little left out. And I, I guess subconsciously or consciously, I try to push aside this whole priesthood thing to the side. But Father W came in actually uh, to another parish across the river and he was exceedingly present to us as high schoolers. And something about his 
presence to me throughout all that. It wasn't as if he was pushing me or pressuring me to go to seminary or check that out, but he always made it clear it was, it was an option, that he was praying for me. And something about the joy of his life, the way he was so generous, that really made the priesthood appealing to me. Finally, we get to when I was in college. I actually entered college just as a normal undergrad, biochemistry, pre-med. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was avoiding the seminary at the time because I was dating. And, but eventually that relationship ended. And so I found myself looking for what I'm supposed to do with my life. And I have indebted to the rector at the college seminary there, Father C. Father C, thank you for welcoming me when I came back knocking on the seminary door and being so, so real. Granted, with the other three priests in the list, we had a fairly close relationship, and that's why they're on the list. But with Father C, it was, he was the first one for me to live under the same roof as him because we lived in the same seminary building. And he was the first one to really form me as a seminarian, as a future priest. And the, the lessons I learned from him, I still carry on. One of the lessons I've taken from him is this focus on being a bridge builder, being a pontifex, as it were, to go out and make those connections with others. And that has been a formative, central idea as I've been preparing for ministry, to be the bridge builder, to be the pontifex. And, and also just living with him, just to see the reality of priestly life, of the human, of being human. Again, I guess being human is, <laughs> has been a theme, realizing that you can be human while ordained. Uh, those are the four priests, Father P, Father B, Father W, and Father C. Thank you. An honorable mention should go to Monsignor D, an elderly priest who's kind of been in the background throughout the, my whole life, in retirement, back home, and he just turned 99 this past month. So a life of, of long, full life of you know, generous, selfless service. And so I'm just, thank you, Monsignor, for your prayers, your support, your hospitality, you know, for making sure that I'm taken care of. Well, that's it for today. If you have any questions, please leave, leave a comment. I'll try to get, get to that. Some people have already left some comments. Uh, so I will be tackling the issue of celibacy on Tuesday because we'll have a, a formation workshop on celibacy Monday night. So I think it'll be a good thing to talk about that. In the meantime, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye.